So the first thing I want to do with a new track now is uh, I want to identify the musical parts of my track and uh, set my hot cues accordingly. The hot cues that I use is uh, hot cue number two, which identifies the main part, hot cue number one, which identifies the loading cue where I want this track to be automatically loaded as soon as I load it into a deck. It will be located at the loading marker. And then I want to set a uh, exit cue or the outro cue, which will identify the that part of the track where actually the main part is over, the break is done, and we're actually repeating and fading out. And the track is about to end, which will be typically around uh, one and a half minutes from the end. So let's uh, have a listen. Um, the way I navigate through the tracks is by using my navigator knob here. And uh, what I want to do is I want to set the jump distance to 32 beats, which represents eight bars. And eight bars is also uh, a phrase, a musical phrase. Most things in electronic music happen in eight bar or 32 beat uh, intervals. And um, it makes a lot of sense to structurize your cue points according to these phrases because that will make mixing in phrase much more easier. So let's go back a bit, navigate back, press play, have a listen to the track. Um, by looking at the waveform, I can already determine that this part here is the intro, which is about to end around here. And this would most obviously be the beginning of my main part. It's typically one to one and a half minutes away from the start of the track. Um, and you can, you simply know when the main part is, is coming up. That's, uh, that's also typically the point where your mix, where you want to be uh, all the way up with your channel fader and where your mix from the other track will be completed, at least mostly completed. So let's, can use the jog wheel here to move around a bit. Let's say this is the, 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 the exactly the location where I want my main part marker to be. So I press two, I press Q marker two, and by this way I create a new hot cue. It's the hot cue number two. If I want to remove this hot cue, I press shift two and it's gone. Uh, when this snap function button is enabled, my marker will automatically jump to the next grid point, as you see here. So if I press 2 now, and I release it again, the track will play from that point. If I make to make, want to make sure if this is actually the right location for me to start, I will just jump back a bit using the move knob and listen to the track if this is the exact right beat where I want to come in. Yes, this is correct. So I have successfully put, uh, put my uh, main part marker now, which I can always easily access whenever I want to jump to that part. The next thing I want to do is I want to create my load marker. That will tell Tractor where to, where to cue the track whenever I load it. And I want this cue, this loading marker, to be a natural number of phrases away from my main part. Because we always want to mix in phrase. We always want the phrase to be finished before we come up with something new, with a new also with a new track. So I set my location with my, my jump width to 32 beats, which is eight bars or one phrase. And I go to hot cue number two to my main part marker and I go back. 
I go back towards the beginning of the track and I count how many jumps I'm going back. This is one, two, three, four. 